if you knew you were enough? What would your life look like? What would love look like? This is the Enough Factor Broadcast, where we're redefining what makes you enough in life and in love. Now here's your host, Suzette Birna. Hello everybody, it's your life coach and relationship solutionist, Suzette Thiernan, and welcome to Enough Factor Podcast. Each week, I am delighted to bring you more and more evidence that you are enough and to help you to finally answer the question for yourself, why? Why you are enough. My enough warriors out there, thank you so much for your support, for your downloads. Thank you so much. Because, you know, without you, I would not have a reason to do my podcast. And if you're new, This podcast's main purpose is to amplify what I've identified as three critical factors of your enoughness. When you don't feel like you're enough, usually one, two, or three of these factors is compromised in some way, shape, or form. You know what they are? They're your voice, your value, and your vision. And so it is my intention to amplify those three critical factors of enoughness so that you can have a more fulfilling and satisfying experience of life and of love. Something that's been on my heart, I've recorded a couple of episodes about it, but you know how you do it, but then you feel like you've left something vital out of the discussion, and so you record it again? Well, that's what I'm doing right now, and I'm in my jammies, and my husband is asleep in the bedroom, and I'm alone with my thoughts. So I want to just talk to you, woman to woman, person to person, and let you know that you are not alone. Let you know that I see you. Let you know that you are deserving of all the good things that love has to offer. But in order for you to receive it, you've got to get closure. Closure on the one that got away. Closure on feeling like you hurt someone. Closure. Oftentimes when I think of closure. I think an ending was not anticipated. It was abrupt. Or it was unfair. The person didn't really give you the benefit of the doubt. But sometimes you feel like you did that to somebody else. You broke someone else's heart and you haven't been able to get over feeling bad about it. You feel like you didn't handle them correctly and the pain was your fault. Tonight, as I record this, and maybe you're listening to it as you're getting dressed for work or you're in traffic or you're fixing dinner or you're on your way from point A to point B. But whenever you listen to this, 
I want you to open your heart to what I'm going to say to you. Closure is something that you owe yourself. No one can give it to you. It doesn't matter that you want to ask them questions like, why did it end? What did I do? Or you want to make it easier on the person that you hurt and you want to let them know it wasn't you, it was me. Regardless, someone else can't give you closure. You have to give it to yourself. At some point, you have to release yourself from the guilt and the responsibility, or you have to release the other person of being abrupt in how they did it. Whatever negativity that you're holding on to, you have to release it. You owe yourself that. And I don't know if anybody's ever told you, closure is something you owe yourself. You owe yourself. To deny yourself closure is to deny yourself love. And the reason I say that is because when you don't give yourself closure, your wound can't heal. If you don't give yourself closure, you can't move on. So even though you might be with a different person, or even though you might be on the dating scene, you will invariably place the burden of your lack of closure on whoever gets involved with you. You place that burden, that debt, on some innocent soul and expect them to pay it. You expect them not to hurt you like the other person hurt you, right? Isn't it the main thing that you grapple with in a new relationship when you haven't given yourself closure? is you're afraid, you you withhold because you're afraid they're going to do the same thing to you that the other person did. And you put that extra burden on them to promise you they won't hurt you, won't disappoint you, won't treat you the way the other person did. And even if you don't have the conversation, even if you don't tell them in your heart, You know that's the way you're going to judge them. They think they're just dating a lovely woman. That they're just interested in a beautiful woman. They don't realize that you are enlisting them in something they had nothing to do with. And you're making them liable for what someone else did. And if you don't give your close, yourself closure, you aren't free to receive what's yours. You're not free to receive love. You're not re- free to receive the goodness that life wants to offer you. And the flip side of it is you can't see the value in another person. You can't see the value in relationships. You can't see the value in getting to know somebody. You can't see the value in letting things happen organically. You can't see the value that's inside of you either. So you owe yourself closure. You owe yourself closure. So how do you get it? You have to accept what is. You have to release whatever issues you had with how it happened. And you have to accept that it happened. Whatever hopes you held, whatever dreams you held, 
whatever expectations you held, whatever you believed, it's over. And there is nothing you can do to change it. Having a conversation with that person, it's not going to change it. It's not going to change the consequences for you or for the other person. It's not going to change it. Explaining why you did what you did is not going to change it. My husband and I talked about how men process. We women think that if we can explain whatever we did, whether we offended them or whatever, we thought if we can explain, if I can talk to you and find out what made you end things, then I can explain. And maybe you'll realize, oh, okay, I misunderstood. I was wrong about you. Okay, let the good times roll, right? But one of the things I had to learn about men, and there's scientific evidence to back me up on this, is that men don't process the same way that women do. They process internally. They think through and they reason. So if they end the relationship, they have fully vetted their decision, at least to their satisfaction, such that when they tell you something is over or they end it abruptly, it may feel abrupt to you, but they look at this relationship, look at your place in their life every way they need to. So talking to them is not going to change their mind. Explaining is not going to change their mind. They have made the decision to end it. And there's nothing that you can say. And the reason why they generally don't want to sit and have a conversation with you and explain it is because once they have decided that it's over, it's over for them. And you have to accept that's the way it is. Judging whether it's right or it's wrong, the way they go about it, is not going to change it. They did it the way they did it because it made sense to them to do it that way. And you have to accept that. You have to accept it. That's the first thing. Stop telling yourself that if you can talk to them, you might can change it. You might can change their minds. Or they might can give you some feedback on what you did wrong so you won't do it again. But guess what? That's just their opinion. Your Mr. Right might like the very thing that Mr. Wrong didn't like. So Waiting for the person that left you to tell you what you did wrong, their opinion means nothing. You weren't their cup of tea. And if you take what they say about you to heart, you might be putting yourself in a bad situation because your Mr. Right is looking for you. And if you change up because of what Mr. Wrong said, your Mr. Right is not going to recognize you. That's the reason why closure is what you give yourself. The very things that unavailable men told me were a problem or were a, was a turn off to them was exactly what turned my husband on about me. My honesty, my calling a thing a thing. My forthcomingness, my forthrightness turned off unavailable men. It turned off the Mr. Wrongs in my life, but was the very thing that allowed my husband to recognize me. 
as the woman he had been wanting and looking for. That's why you have to give yourself closure. Mr. Wrongs can't give you closure. Their opinion doesn't matter. Their opinion doesn't matter. And you also have to acknowledge that there was nothing you could have done to have stopped it. That's the definition that Oprah said helped her so much with forgiveness. You can forgive somebody when you realize that there was nothing you could have done to have prevented what happened. That's when you can forgive. There was nothing that you could have done that would have prevented what happened. So closure, acceptance, forgiveness, they're all kind of like intertwined. Then you have to accept that the person's ending it the way they did was their decision. It seemed right to them at that point in time. They did it the way they did it because to them it was the best way they could handle it. Doesn't make it right or wrong. It was their decision to handle it the way they did. Their decision doesn't have anything to do with you. It doesn't mean you were a bad person. It doesn't mean that it was your fault. It's nothing against you. Their perspective, their opinions, what bothers them and, do, and what doesn't bother them, those views and values were cultivated before he even met you. His beliefs, his values, that has to do with him. Doesn't have anything to do with you. He lived his way through those values and beliefs before you even entered the picture. So it is ridiculous for you to hold your soul hostage because of a decision somebody else made for themselves. Right? And I know that closure is not easy. It's not easy. Because I think it's easier to blame the other person to justify why you can't release it. It's easier to blame yourself to justify why you can't release it. It's easier to cling than it is to let go. And maybe it's because letting go was a model for us. Maybe it's because nobody ever sat us down and told us that when it comes to love and relationships, that all relationships end. Maybe nobody told us that. But it's true. All relationships end at some point. Think about it. All relationships end. Even if you are in a till death do us part relationship, it's still going to come to an end. Every relationship, I want you to really sit with this reality. Every relationship is going to end at some point. And when you understand that, all relationships end. And I think it helps you to get to the point of release sooner. It allows you to live in the moment and to cherish those moments more consciously and intentionally when you realize that every moment you have is a gift. And at some point, it's going to end. 
but seeing it as a gift allows your heart to heal quicker and you to move on easier. That relationships is a receiving and letting go. Like breathing in and out. It's a taking in and releasing. You take in the fragrance of something new. And when it's over, you release it. Relating is like breathing. You experience and you release. So, just like another person can't breathe for you, no one else can give you closure but you. I could not get closure on the one who got away until I accepted the fact that he didn't belong to me. Once I accepted the fact that he wasn't mine and he never would be mine, I was able to do the work of releasing him out of my dream, my hope, my expectation. I was able to give myself closure. And the work was making healing my heart more important than the ending, than how it ended. Right. For me to begin the process of closure, I had to make the healing of my heart more important than how things ended. I had to accept that no one was going to do that for me. I had to make my mental and emotional well-being more important than figuring out why things ended the way they ended. Peace is something that you have to seek. I think there's a scripture that says, seek peace and pursue it. You have to pursue your peace. You have to pursue your well-being and not hold yourself hostage or punish yourself for what somebody else did. Punish yourself. Putting a debt on yourself that you were never meant to pay. You were never supposed to suffer because of somebody else's decision. And closure is getting down to the root cause of why you would hold yourself back from the love that's waiting to love you. Why you would hold yourself back. Why you would punish yourself. Why you would do that to yourself. That's the soul work you have to do. What inside of you wants to hold you responsible, wants to hold you back, that's making you bear the guilt and the shame, that's making it your fault, that's holding you hostage and refusing to allow you closure. That's what you need to spend more time on, working through. Working yourself through that. Releasing yourself from that jail cell so that you can move on with your life. That's the work. That's the work that has to be done because you're worth it. That's the work that has to be done because you're important. You are critical to your life's story. If you don't show up for you, You have no life. You are the main actor. You are it. You are critical. You're essential to your life's story. You're not a supporting actor. You're the main actor. Without you, there'd be no story. Without you, there'd be no life. That's why you owe yourself closure. You're not free to even live your life. You're not free to experience true joy and true freedom. And that was a decision I had to make. I had to make a decision to not allow my ex-husband what I experienced with him. To not allow that to hold me hostage. 
and even in a subsequent relationship where the man I was dating told me if things didn't work out with me, he wasn't going to try again with nobody else. But I made a decision that somebody's son was going to love me. That was, our ending was not going to be my ending. There was love out there for me. And I was going to do what I needed to do so that I could be ready to receive it. I was going to detox from all the toxins of relationships past. The bruises, the wounds to my self-esteem, the guilt, the shame. I had to get that stuff out of me so that I could be ready and available for love. So your takeaway is closure isn't just something you give yourself. Closure is what you owe yourself. That's the only debt from a relationship past that you need to pay is the debt to yourself to give yourself closure and to do the work so that you can. I don't want you to have any regrets for the opportunities to be loved that you missed because you could not give yourself closure from the one that got away or the one you hurt. So I'm sitting here with you having a sober and honest conversation. The guilt that you're carrying isn't helping anybody. The anger that you're carrying isn't helping anybody. The prison that you have put your heart in isn't helping anybody. Closure's for you. Closure is release in you. Closure is your freedom. You deserve it. And if you don't feel like you do, you need to deal with the guilt so that you can give yourself closure. You need to deal with the anger so that you can give yourself closure. You need to find a get out of jail free card so that you can give yourself closure and set yourself free. It's your choice. You have to make the decision. Are you going to hold on to all the reasons that you're holding yourself captive, that you're holding yourself back, that you're blocking yourself from receiving love? Or are you going to seek closure? And I don't just mean feeling better. I mean being better, being well, being healthy. If you're afraid of love, you are not healthy. If you're afraid of getting hurt, you are not healthy. You may be functional, but you're not healthy. Closure. You owe yourself closure. Well, that's it. My husband's snoring in the other room. (laughs) It's become white noise. (laughs) I've gotten used to it. (laughs) So I'm going to get ready and call it a night. But I really wanted to sit with you and to engage in real talk, to amplify your vision a bit. Because you have to have a vision, or like the vision I had, that somebody's son was going to love me. That was a vision. What's your vision? Do you see yourself in a loving relationship and a great partnership? Do you see yourself happy in it? Do you have a vision that somebody's going to love you? You don't care? How many failed experiences you had, you ain't giving up because somebody going to love you. I hear you, dream girl. <laughs> and I am telling you, I hear you, I hear you. What's your vision? Is your vision, I ain't going out like this? I want to hear it. The Bible says, write it down, make it plain. Okay. Well. That's it.
for this episode. And until next time, I'm going to say it till it gets in your spirit. You are worthy. You are worth it. You are more than enough. Bye now. You have just listened to the Enough Factor Podcast with your host, Suzette Fernand. To get notified of new episodes or to dig deeper into today's topic, become a subscriber. And while you're at it, tell us how we're doing and what topics you're interested in. We appreciate your feedback and your reviews. Until next time, remember, you are worthy, you are worth it, you are enough.